Hey Audacious Church, uh, thanks for joining us for this devotion today. Uh, hope you're well, whatever time of day you're uh, checking in. Um, yeah, I hope you've been enjoying this series that we've been doing. Devotions are about relationships, all different kinds of relationships, um, families, friendships, um, and this week we're looking at uh, relationships in my community. And I um, just wanted to take a moment to think um, about our relationships in our community um, and looking at the life of Moses. Um, Moses' story is amazing and very long and I would love to go into all the details right now but if you've got time check out um, the book of Exodus uh, and Moses' story is laid out there but the highlights are that most of his life he didn't fit in. He was born a Hebrew, raised as an Egyptian uh, an Egyptian prince in the palace, which sounds great, um, but didn't really fit in. Um, and then he tried to leave Egyptian life to be embraced by the Hebrews, and that didn't work. And so he fled and was a foreigner in the land of Midian um, and and never really found his, his place until the burning bush story. You may have heard of that. Um, and God spoke to him and said, I want to use you to deliver your people, my people, the Hebrews, from Egyptian slavery. Um, and so he went back and he was unconfident, but God said that he should go. And he went back to release the, the Hebrew people and negotiate with Pharaoh, the Egyptian leader, how they could be. And um, there's a verse in chapter 6, verse 9, um, that kind of breaks my heart a little bit. After all this, you know, rejection that he's um, felt, Moses goes back to be the hero. And this is what it says, Exodus chapter 6, verse 9. It says, so Moses told the people what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. I was like, oh my gosh. That was even though God had said, God had told Moses, this is what we're going to do. This is what I need you to do. The people that he was trying to help were not interested. They, they, they didn't have the faith. They didn't have the headspace. They didn't have the emotion to hope uh, of any faith about the situation. And so it was kind of tough for Moses in that moment when he had the right heart the right attitude, he was following God's will and yet still the people in his community, the people that he wanted to help save were not on the same page as him and I thought it was it was tough and it made me think about people in my community maybe that that might be living lives where they're too discouraged, um, not necessarily in the brutality of their slavery but their situations and circumstance that they're in. Um, and it made me think like, uh, it's a bit of a, a, a cheesy phrase that I've heard before about um, whether we as people are um, thermometers or thermostats in our situations. Uh, obviously the difference being that a thermometer measures the temperature of a situation, of a room, of an environment, Whereas a thermostat alters and determines the temperature of a room, situation, environment. And Moses had that tough challenge that he was like, I can either respond to my community and match where they're at and say, yeah, you're right. Things are tough. We are in slavery. There isn't much hope. And let's placate each other and have this, um, you know, common emotion that we can share and we can relate to each other and we can all be on the same page of how rubbish everything is um but Moses was called by God he held on to that uh, God had told him that this is supposed to, what he was supposed to do and how he's supposed to lead the people so he decided look even if nobody else has faith nobody else thinks that this situation get any better God has called me to bring freedom and so he decided to be a thermostat. Um, I'm going to not be determine the room determine what temperature I am, but I am going to determine the temperature of the room and the environment. And you'll probably know the story of the, um, the battle that Moses went through with Pharaoh to get the Hebrews released. There was 
failure after failure, he would go and see Pharaoh and say, yeah, you can go. No, no, you can't. No, you can't go. And there will be a plague and all kinds of stuff. You need to take some time to read that. We haven't got time um, in this little um, video, but please read it. But the conclusion, six chapters later, Exodus chapter 12, verse 41 says this, it was on the last day of the 430th year that the Lord's forces left the land. On this night, the Lord kept his promise to bring his people out of the land of Egypt. Wow. Moses, with no encouragement, nobody even saying, we want you to do this. They were actually saying, just leave us alone. And yet he held on to God's word and broke 430 years of slavery for the Hebrew people as he led them out of Egypt, out of slavery. And I just feel challenged um, about me, you know, as I'm in my community, whether it's the, the parents at my kids' football training and I'm sat chatting around or whether it's people at work or people on the bus or people in the supermarket or people in the school playground that are talking about you know, the economic climate and how terrible everything is or whether it's politics or whatever, the environment that is um, so strong. Are we, as God's people, as God's ambassadors, as representatives in our community, are we thermometers that just reflects what's happening everywhere and kind of chameleons into whatever environment we are? Or can we be a thermostat that can actually carry faith, even when other people don't have it, even when other people maybe don't even appreciate it? You can carry faith and hope and life into our community. And, and that's my challenge, I guess. That's what I'm thinking. I need to be um, a man of faith today in my community, in my relationships, in my environment. Okay, hope you're doing great, church. Have a great day. Be a thermostat and set the temperature. Be the faith bringer in your community. Have a good day.